Egypt. Joining me now to discuss it, Fox News contributor and former U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, John Bolton. Rick Grinnell, who is a former spokesman for the last four U.S. ambassadors to the United Nations. And Ambassador Nick Burns, who is a former ambassador to NATO and former undersecretary of state under President Clinton. Gentlemen, thank you all so much for being here. So now you've got uh, President Morsi dismissing the prospect of, collapse of, e of the collapse of Egypt. But let's just start there, because that's something we really don't want uh, over here, Ambassador Bolton. And yet one of the reasons that we're keeping such a close eye on the growing unrest over there. Well, I don't see the prospect of the state itself collapsing, but I think Morsi's actions show exactly why people feared uh, having a Muslim Brotherhood government in power, uh, that it would be a one-person, one-vote, one-time experience. Uh, and I have to say, the fact that the military so far is silent uh, could indicate they're prepared to acquiesce in this, although people have said the Brotherhood and the military could never come to agreement on rule in Egypt. I I've always believed that's a possibility. So I think this is very, very serious, and it's one reason I've favored uh, suspending both economic and military aid to Egypt uh, until this gets resolved. Rick, where is this going? Because, uh, you know, they, they got rid of Hosni Mubarak over there because he was dictatorial and ruled with an iron fist, and they wanted something that was more akin to democracy. And now you've got um, President Morsi in there, and he's saying, if I have to do what's necessary to protect this nation, I will, and I may be close to doing so. And now his critics are saying that to us sounds like he's about to take, quote, suppressive measures. Or it reminds them of what happened in November uh, just this last year when he took unprecedented powers and decided to legislate without judicial oversight. You know, I think that when you combine uh, Morsi's words on the Palestinian-Israeli conflict and his questioning of really what happened during the 9-11 terrorist attacks, people are rightfully nervous about where he's going. He's got a Ph.D. from USC right here in Los Angeles, but it seems a far cry for what he's trying to do now. And using this term inciting violence, I think, is really a political term, and it's constantly used in the Arab world to mean whatever somebody wants it to mean. Ambassador Burns, you've got a situation here where you sort of have President Morsi and the Muslim Brotherhood on the one hand, and then the more secularist Egyptians on the other hand. Does that... Does that make it clear for us, as you know, more, a more secular country in the West, who we're rooting for? It seems much more complicated than that. Well, we should want to root for democracy and reform if that can be the future of Egypt. But we're seeing two years after Tahrir Square, the revolution is still playing out. Morsi has mishandled this. He has not opened a true dialogue with the opposition. He is, you know, he's not prepared a political process that would allow a lot of different voices to be heard. And if these warnings turn out to be some version of dictatorial rule, further dictatorial rule, or martial law, then there's going to be a real, I think, explosion in Egypt because there are millions of Egyptians who don't want to see a theocratic future of the country. They want to see a more democratic future, and it does put the Obama administration in the position of trying to, having to push very hard, I think probably right now behind the scenes on Morsi, to cease and desist from some of these stronger warnings that he's been giving publicly. A theocratic future in Egypt is something that you've been uh, concerned about for a long time, Ambassador Bolton, and you sat in this set with me during the Arab Spring, which so many people celebrated as such a wonderful turning point and expressed concerns back then about where this might lead. What what do you see as the major risk to America in watching all of this? Well, if Morsi is able to hold on to power, to suppress the opposition, to keep the military basically acquiescing in what he's doing, uh, then I think he's both going to increase repression domestically. We've already seen 100,000 Coptic Christians flee Egypt since the fall of Mubarak. And I think he'll do what he promised to do in the election campaign for president, and that is abrogate the Camp David Accord. He's already grown closer to Iran. I, I think the overall deterioration in strategic stability in the Middle East only gets worse if Morsi consolidates power. That's bad for the United States, bad for Israel, bad, bad for our other friendly Arab regimes. Well, if that's true, if that's true, let me ask this of you, Rick then should we be rooting for the secularists who, you know, that's a, that's a broad way of describing who's on the street opposing Morsi's policies, but should we be rooting for them if we don't want to see Morsi consolidate power? 
Yeah, I think I think that's a very good point. You know, the evidence is there. We've seen Morsi now power grabbing and doing all the wrong things. I, I think the United States has got to look at the writing on the wall and react. It's it's time to read what's obviously happening and not wait any longer. I think uh, Investor Bolton's right. We should not be giving uh, selling arms to uh, Egypt right now when we really don't know what the leadership looks like. And we give them over a billion dollars, uh, a billion and a half about last year. Uh, Ambassador Burns, though, you know, this is a country in which we really want, to, we want stability. And, and Ambassador Bolton talks about the Camp David Accords. We really want them to have Israel's back as well. Uh, and yet you see things deteriorating in a way, especially when we had that news conference last week between Benjamin Netanyahu and President Obama, in which it really sounded like Netanyahu was saying, look, I've been given the okay to go it alone if I need to. And one wonders what we're about to see unfold in the Middle East. I think the Obama administration has handled this skillfully. You've seen the, uh, the, the administration use the relationship with Morsi to help stop the Hamas rocket attacks back late last year. Egypt has not turned fully towards Iran yet, and we need to keep Egypt as part of an anti-Iran coalition in the Arab world. And we certainly need, as you say, to maintain the peace agreement with Israel. That points to the need for very vigorous diplomacy behind the scenes. I think the Obama administration is doing it. We have a skillful American ambassador in Ann Patterson and a very skillful Secretary of State in John Kerry. I believe they're pushing on the, on the Morsi government to cease and desist from these more uh, aggressive tactics that they're threatening to return this situation to one where the government begins to listen to the people in the street and gives them, a pl gives them an opportunity uh, to say what they have to say and try to reduce this level of violence. I don't think it would make any sense right now for the United States to cut off all aid. We would lose influence if we did that. Better to use American influence in this very important country behind the scenes, which is what I think the administration is doing. Yeah, it was supposed to be a new day when Morsi, uh, you know, ascended. And, uh, of course, the Muslim Brotherhood said that they would never seek the presidency and so on. That turned out not to be true. But it's supposed to be a new, a new day. Meantime, we've got dozens of Islamists staging a protest outside of TV studios that are independent and critical of Morsi. And that's not exactly the direction we were hoping to go in, Ambassador Bolton. But what do you think we are doing behind the scenes? Uh, President Obama hasn't spoken on this publicly yet, uh, nor has uh, uh, Secretary Kerry, I believe. So what, are, what do you think we're, it is likely we are doing behind the scenes? Well, whatever it is, it's obviously not working. You know, Morsi is well on the way to packing the military uh, top echelons with supporters of the Muslim Brotherhood. I think really it's the military uh, that is the closest thing we've got to something dependable in Egypt, and that's uh, moving away from us. So I see the situation deteriorate, and I think uh, unless we were to suspend aid, uh, we, we would have no way to, to explain to Morsi that we're not going to protect him. I think Senator or Secretary Kerry's decision to release $250 million of economic aid to Morsi sent exactly the wrong signal. And with that money in his pocket, he's now having prosecutors call in the domestic opposition. That is not a good correlation. Rick Grinnell, spokesman to the last four U.N. ambassadors. That, of course, includes the man to your right, uh, John Bolton. So it, what's he like behind the scenes? Is he, is he difficult? I mean, tell us. He's not, he's not difficult at all. He's uh, actually, one thing that people don't know is he's very funny and direct. And, uh, I <laughs> we never, know that here. I would never say. <laughs> yeah, if you know him, you know from behind the scenes. He's got a wicked sense of humor. I had to ask. Gentlemen, thank you all so much for your perspective.